different. Um, uh, so this example is also uh, uh, a wonderful example of a particle filtering and its potential. Um, uh, but one which sheds light on a different type of use of it, um, different sphere of use of it. Um, and this one as well comes from some extraordinary work of one of my students, a uh, student not represented here, but here in spirit, uh, uh, whose uh, his first name is Yang, last name is Qin, Qin Yang. And uh, for her master's thesis, um, uh, she did some wonderful work with agent-based models for e-cigarettes and cigarettes, as well as um, some work involving uh, uh, gestational diabetes and, and, and type two diabetes and, um, and uh, look at, at, at risk to moms and kids, uh, as well as this work on particle filtering for COVID-19 COVID really, sorry, for uh, uh, particle filtering for West Nile virus um, bearing mosquitoes, um, Culex tarsalis, which is the, the primary vector for West Nile virus within the Canadian prairies. Um, so I'm gonna uh, share my screen and, and we'll whip through this pretty quickly to allow us to get lunch and, and move on to other topics. Um, so uh, within this model, um, our focus lies on, on vector-borne illness. And um, vector-borne illness, of course, is a scourge of many areas of the world, particularly the developing world. And, and um, you know, mosquito-borne illness, despite advances in bed nets and you know, uh, anti-malarial drugs and so on, it still causes millions of deaths each year. And um, whether it's dengue fever or malaria, um, uh, or or other high burden illnesses, um, there's there's really uh, very high levels of morbidity and mortality from mosquito-borne illness, and and um, mosquito control efforts are important for preventing outbreaks from these diseases, whether in countries such as Canada or in uh, in Asia and Africa and other areas that that have very high levels of um, mosquito-borne um, vectors for mosquito-borne diseases. Um, and an important part of that is um, mosquito population surveillance. And mosquito population surveillance, um, uh, much of it occurs through mosquito traps, uh, such as uh, New Jersey light traps or, or, or traps like from the US CDC, um, as recommended by US CDC with, with carbon dioxide and, and, uh, and lights to attract mosquitoes. Um, to try to quantify uh, mosquito quantities, but um, uh, but it turns out that um, it's it's very labor intensive and it's um, quite costly because of that, um, and it can lead to delays um, in in sensing. More importantly, you know uh, the uh, or equally importantly the the empirical data we have from mosquito populations um, by itself does not give us direct insight into how they're likely to evolve, how they're likely to evolve in light of, of um, weather patterns and how they're likely to evolve you know, precipitation um, uh, and, and uh, temperature, uh, relative humidity, et cetera, which can bear very strongly on, um, uh, on mosquito dynamics uh, with some such as rainfall and temperature bearing on multiple stages of the life cycle. So mosquitoes are born as eggs, progress on to larvae and then onto pupae, um, and then um, can emerge as, as adults and take wing. Um, uh, now there's some really nice work involved in characterizing dynamics of mosquito life cycle. Um, and uh, this model, this, this work with particle filtering involved um, such modeling. Um, in a way that also sought to, to capture impacts of temperature, humidity, precipitation, as well as impacts of mosquito control um, 
interventions undertaken um, within the jurisdiction once we had data, which is uh, our fair city of Saskatoon. Uh, this was work uh, very kindly enabled through municipal uh, cooperation um, with the parties doing um, application of, of mosquito control back to back, as well as um, uh, involved in measuring mosquito uh, populations um, using, um, uh, using sampling techniques uh, for both larvae and for, um, uh, and for adults, adults. So um, the goal here with, uh, with our modeling was to characterize mosquito populations. And uh, early on, I had been warned by colleagues that um, this is very, very difficult with a model, um, that mosquito dynamics have actually been shown in some areas of the world to be chaotic, um, to exhibit these patterns that almost look like randomness. There's hidden order there, but they, um, uh, they're, they're very difficult to, to accurately simulate you know, ahead of time um, uh, from first principles. Um, and, and one of the reasons there's so much variability is because of these weather, um, these weather related factors that lead to mosquitoes um, breeding, um, uh, you know, speed up mosquito uh, maturation and, and uh, the, the degree to which they are, uh, uh, are able to lay eggs, which then hatch. But there's other factors too. And, and importantly, mosquito counts in traps are affected by, um, by weather-related factors. So if it's a very windy day, not many mosquitoes get trapped. Um, um, mosquitoes uh, tend not to, uh, uh, to be able to uh, to really go out in, in very cold weather here. Um, so if it gets down below, say, 10 degrees, they often won't be very active. It's not a sign that they are missing. It's just they're, they're not captured in the traps. Um, and then some of these factors also, it turns out, govern risk to humans, but I'm not going to get into them, such as wind, uh, precipitation, temperature, et cetera. Um, uh, we sought to make use of weather factors in mosquito-related time series. And I should credit, additionally, a, 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 a previous student, Pebo, um, Tong Pebo, as well as Jushin Liu for their guiding work in, in, um, in some, of, some of this work and, and Pebo's really excellent work and Winchell Chen's contribution to this. So what we, uh, another student in my lab, uh, a leading student in my lab. So, what we sought to do is bring together a, a model of mosquito dynamics with particle filtering. Um, and uh, we used likelihood functions, um, which uh, sought to characterize um, the, the number of observed mosquitoes for a number of sites that were collected. And we actually had data on the number of sites that were collected. And we, we um, uh, so in other words, some days they'd sample uh, mosquito traps in more sites, some days fewer. Uh, and we uh, use particle filtering in order to correct, in some sense, the, this uh, observed, or, or this, this model and its evolution with observed mosquito counts. Um, uh, a key component of this was, was reasoning about the probability of, of capturing a mosquito um, by uh, the, the traps involved. Um, uh, and this involved reasoning about the weather conditions, um, uh, weather condition affects the, the likelihood it will take flight and, and that it'll be trapped. Um, temperature tended to lead to mosquitoes to, to, be, uh, to take wing more frequently. They seek more blood meals. Um, uh, wind speed uh, will, will, will tend to lower. So if wind speed is higher, the mosquitoes aren't able to navigate as effectively and they're less likely to be trapped. And precipitation can kind of go either way with mosquitoes kind of like being out and about when it's, when it's um, not too bright and sunny, but if it's raining quite heavily, they'll take, uh, take shelter beneath plant leaves or what have you. Um, and you know we sought to characterize here a, uh, a probability 
of trapping a given mosquito as uh, based on a, a regression um, type uh, model here, um, where we had characterized the influence of temperature, wind speed, precipitation, et cetera. And uh, we ended up um, um, engaging in, uh, in linear regression to, uh, in order to, to estimate that. Uh, I won't go into the details, but um, we uh, sought to use um, successive day data uh, where we assumed the mosquito population was pretty similar between them in order to capture um, some estimates of each of these parameters here. We reasoned about successive days based on differences in wind speed or precipitation or temperature uh, in both uh, those directions and related to the, uh, the number of mosquitoes that were trapped on each of those days and, and found some relationships uh, here which were uh, sensible in terms of uh, the direction and, and size of the uh, size of the effects. Um, we did look, as I recall, at, at um, the, uh, the, the uh, statistical significance uh, of these um, of these effect sizes, and as I recall, they were they were all statistically significant. We we did have quite a lot of uh, data for that. Now. Um, that related to the probability a mosquito will be trapped um, uh, on on a given a given day, um, and uh, here we sought to uh, to further um, uh, calibrate some aspects of the model in order to um, try to best match uh, a particle filter version of the model. With, with empirical data. Um, and we sought to, in particular, best match mosquito populations as we tuned some other parameters. So what this, mo so what this project did, which others discussed thus far haven't, is it combined calibration on the one hand with particle filtering. Um, so we were adjusting parameter values so that the particle filtered model um, Best, uh, best accounted for the, um, the, the mosquitoes uh, that, that were captured. The results from this were uh, very favorable um, and allowed us to, to capture here um, a, the underlying dynamics of the mosquito populations in such a way that the posterior predictive distribution, in other words, given the model, um, what it predicted mosquitoes would be number would be captured on a given day matched uh, very, very well, um, uh, or at least acceptably well to the observed data. So we had a model of the underlying population as captured by this model that was particle filtered, plus this, this model associated with, with tramping um, in order to, uh, in a way that would allow us to characterize, given a population, how many would be trapped based on, um, on, on the uh, weather factors. The weather factors did affect the underlying dynamics in terms of development of mosquito stages and, and so on, but it, it, it further affected the, the probability of traffic. And so we could kind of match up um, the data that we got out of the model on the one hand with trap data from the world. Um, Beyond this, we were characterizing the underlying population of mosquitoes. And I'm not going to show um, those graphs here, but those characterized um, the, the actual number of mosquitoes that were present uh, in a way that would then allow us to project forward that mosquito population um, over time uh, to assess risk to humans in future weeks. It would also allow us to anticipate possible weather conditions such as very hot and somewhat wet weather, which might further expand mosquito populations and lead to higher risks of West Nile virus. So, um, uh, you know, just some limitations of this, the, the probability of mosquitoes being captured in traps um, is only really roughly estimated by the linear regression model. And 
um, one factor we had to deal with that's that's of necessity because we ran this over many years was dealing with mosquito diapause. And uh, you could, if you informally thought of this as um, mosquito hibernation, you could be excused. I mean, it's it's kind of what mosquitoes do in the winter um, to avoid dying. A uh, small number are able to live through the winter here in Saskatchewan, where it can get to minus 40, um, by going into animal burrows and, um, and seeking out um, places underground where they weather through the, the winter um, in a sort of dormant state called diapause. And we had a very simple sort of characterization of diapause that, um, that was capturing that in the model, which uh, probably could use refinement. The final thing that we're seeking to do here is we, we have a model which fairly well accounts for the, um, the number of trapped mosquitoes over time. Um, and in which therefore capture, in which alongside that captures the number of mosquitoes present in the population. But um, a lot of this hinged on this uh, linear regression and, and calibration. And what we're really hoping to do is to leverage this next, next technique we're gonna be discussing in the bootcamp, particle MCMC, to really better allow for estimation of the capturing coefficients. Um, right now, the, it's, um, uh, it requires some accommodations or, or compromises to sort of estimate the coefficients via um, a, a regression type method. Whereas we could capture them via particle MCMC by estimating them directly using the particle filtered model. And that would be using the empirical data as the factor to which we're, we're simulating would be adjusting our assumptions about how the probability of capturing mosquito is affected by wind speed and, and temperature and, and precipitation and so on. And, um, and by estimating those parameters, at the same time as we're particle filtering against that, we might be able to get a much better, better sort of results in terms of matching some of, um, some of these observations on mosquito, trapped mosquito counts. Um, but overall, um, uh, although it's not shown explicitly here, uh, the model, once we took into account this particle filtering step combined with this model of mosquito trapping, the model performed vastly better than a model um, just used on its own, a, a simulation model used of its own of mosquito dynamics. Um, and particularly, it's able to get corrected as weather ch changes unexpectedly, as, um, as you know, there's different dynamics that are not modeled um, in this existing formulation, which affects how many mosquitoes are out there. Um, those can be captured. There's predator prey dynamics with dragonflies, for example, or other predators that hunt mosquitoes, both in the water and uh, in the air. And those aren't accounted for in our model uh, right now. And particle filtering allowed it to kind of um, reground the model with mosquito trap counts over time. Um, but in a way where we needed to reason about this underlying population of mosquito, not merely the number that were captured uh, to, to understand how those two related um, in order to understand how a trap count would translate into grounding the underlying simulation uh, uh, population of mosquitoes, we needed to be able to reason about how that underlying population translated number being trapped through mediated by those weather variables. So this was a, a case where we used particle filtering with calibration to calibrate parameters and where we use linear regression to estimate um, the, the probabilities of, of traps in this sort of way, um, but where really particle MCMC would probably be a much better solution for estimating less well-known parameter values as well as these impacts of, of weather. Um, 
Okay, I promised a, a short talk here, and I think I'll I'll stop it there. Um, any questions uh, about this work that I could answer, or any any things people would like to bring forward for discussion? Anyone? Okay. Um, not hearing any any uh, added interest there. I think what we'll do is we'll break for lunch. Um, uh, after lunch, I'm gonna see based on on that interest, I'll go back and reflect on the um, uh, on the particle filter for COVID-19 to see how readily I could fold that in. But we have an afternoon which um, includes a number of, of substantive components. We're gonna be talking about particle MCMC, um, having a case study um, for particle MCMC, um, uh, related to opioid abuse um, uh, in uh, Cincinnati and a little bit of a vignette for work we're doing in Edmonton in that area. Um, shadow manifold reconstruction, then this issue of discovery of model structure from data, um, including using uh, deep learning methods. Um, and finally, we'll talk about choosing between multiple methods uh, to wrap up the bootcamp. Okay, so um, we're here at uh, twelve. I th uh, I think we'll um, we'll go for an hour and, and meet back at on the hour. Um, it, I think it's an hour and six minutes from now. Uh, we'll reconvene and we'll uh, move on to some of this additional material with possible sort of sojourn to to talk about the COVID nineteen particle filter model. In a, in a very um, nimble way. Let me see if I can do that. Thanks very much, and we'll see you then. I'll close this down so we can get the, um, the videos going. Thank you very much, and we will see you then.